Yes, it was the deadliest invasion since the Civil War. It ripped the guts right out of this city. It made the street a sighting. It was something different. The city's murder rate soared and eventually doubled, making Richmond the second deadliest city per capita in the United States. When you smoke crack, dopamine and other chemicals flood your brain within seconds. But the rush doesn't last. It was something that made people hype, but it didn't last long. So that would make you chase it over and over and over. We now have a second generation of addicts and dealers who grew up in the midst of the madness. I mean, I've been literally six feet away from a person that got shot in the drive-by when I was buying crack on the south side of Richmond. A kid got shot in the neck and in the hill. And I've seen people robbed. I've seen people completely lose their whole family out here. I lost, my mom ended up getting murdered. She was getting high while she ended up getting murdered at a party. As a child, Stephen said he also had to deal with his mother's cocaine addiction, although she got clean before she died. I saw what it did to her and all her friends, and it just destroyed everybody. It was almost like a, the, the drug scene was almost like a fad. The, the carrying the guns, uh, the going to the nightclubs, the fast money, gangster rap, hip hop. We saw mindless, blatant, reckless violence as the city's temperature spiked with crack fever. It makes you aggressive. And if you're already an aggressive male, it makes you act out in all kinds of outrageous behaviors. Turf killings, young men killing their grandmoms, kids getting hit by stray bullets. Because users only needed a few bucks for the next rock, even poor people were getting robbed. More people got involved in it, trying to get the money. Everybody wanted to be a part of something that really was just killing us. This is Afton Avenue in Southside. Used to be a drive through crack market right here. Five murders in this spot in a short period of time in 1993. But what's important about this spot is it illustrated the us against them philosophy of many people in this city. Back then, many of the folks in the poorest neighborhoods sided more with the young dealers than the police. And the community engagement is definitely different today than it was 20, 25 years ago. Back then, a woman on Afton told me she'd bring drinks to the dealers and drive them for a fee to King's Dominion, since some of them weren't old enough to drive, although they knew how to pull a trigger. Police got little cooperation when trying to solve murders and other crimes. At one point, detectives weren't even solving half the slayings. A series of daylight shootings in Center City were the final straws for the Broad Street and Gray Street business districts. Miller and Rhodes, Tallheimers, Barry Burke, all went away. The recovery from crack fever has been slow, but gaining momentum in recent years with Started the unlikely help first. of the depressant heroin, Dog. which has made a big comeback yeah, in the past decade. Heroin is like a depressant drug. It's, it, it's a down. Crack is an upper. So you always going to want more and more and more and more, and you do whatever it takes to get it. Right now, the prevalent drug is what we're looking at is a lot of heroin. Uh, we're making a lot more heroin arrests um, here recently. There's no question the community has switched sides, helping the police rather than the dealers and addicts among them. I think they don't tolerate it. They don't expect it. They want to see the police department engage those. We get a lot more. I think tips come in so much quicker now. Now there are more recovery programs for addicts, like this tier in the city jail although the demand for help far exceeds the supply. But things never stay the same in the world of street drugs. Now it just seems like all of the younger people is just pills, 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 any kind of pills they want. There's also been a surge lately in crystal meth in the city. And many dealers have moved off the street corner, using phones and social media to meet in homes or a quick stop anywhere in town. There's a lot of, a lot of young guys now that are out of control out there robbing people and stuff like that. And don't forget all those who got locked up during the madness that started 25 years ago. A lot of people that were locked up in the 90s that had, you know, 15, 20 years that was the violence of coming home. I say like this, if, if, if they're not willing to help the addict, they will see it again. We still have a long way to go, but it's nothing, nothing like it was back in in the late 80s and, and early 90s, especially when I first came here. It's just, it's just a different game. So are we in any danger of going back to those crack fever days? Probably not, but we better stay on top of it. On Broad Street, Mark Holmberg, CBS 6 News.